Hello everyone, this is Mike Fauché. I've done several videos that talk about how to configure OpenVPN, but today's video is about how to actually use it for everyday applications. If you want to know more about how to get the best out of OpenVPN and how to connect to all your devices, then watch the rest of this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications icon. So recently there's been a lot of questions on how to best utilize your OpenVPN connection once you got it configured and connected so that you can access all your devices on your internal network. So today I want to cover a bunch of topics, um, things like accessing your files through the File Explorer, using QFile, mobile apps, you know, we'll talk a little bit about file copies. We'll look at remote desktop uh, with internal devices or internal systems in your house. Accessing different devices through your browser, such as NAS units or routers or security cams or security systems. And we'll also talk about performance a little bit. So before you get started, one of the things you want to make sure is that you go into the QVPN privilege settings and make sure that you've enabled the users that you actually want to connect with and that those users actually have access to the files that you're trying to get to or the devices you're trying to get to. So assuming you have it downloaded and configured correctly, let's go ahead and connect up and walk through some of the options that we can do once we're connected. And most importantly, what can we do once we're connected? So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. And then I'm going to log in. Now you'll notice you do get a deprecation option on the top. So there, there is a step back because of the newer and updated version of the client. If you uh, don't like to see that error message, it's, it's not really an error message, it's more of a warning that it's stepping back, then you must download version 2.4 of the OpenVPN client. It's not harmful and it does still connect and it does still uh, provide a level of encryption. It's just a different level of encryption. So now that we're connected, let's take a look at a couple options that we have that we can do. The first thing that uh, probably brings some level of confusion is the file explorer. So if I go here to the file explorer, so the first thing I want to point out is that when you do connect, you need to use IP addresses to access your particular devices. So if you're going to access things through the file explorer, and let's say I go over here to my .86, it's going to show me the contents of that particular NAS. This happens to be a NAS unit. Um, same with 87. If I look at 87, I'm going to be able to see all of the files and folders that are on 87, just like they were in, on my desktop. That said, if I try and use the name like I am here, it's going to error out on me. You'd have to kind of get used to doing IP addresses. Now, what I've done to avoid memorizing too many things is I've actually created shortcuts here for my key IP addresses. And on my main system, I got quite a few more. Because I can also, if I want to, for example, access my Unraid server. So I can quickly log into, my, into the files that are on my Unraid server and access those the same way I access anything on my QNAP. So again, this is uh, something that you got to get used to a little bit. Most, I think most people that try to do this the first time, they try and access the device name and that doesn't always work. It's always easier and more direct to access things through the IP address. And if you create yourself some shortcuts, as I mentioned earlier, you find that it won't be that difficult to navigate around. In terms of file copies, you can copy files the same way that you copy files from your desktop. Understand you are on an online connection, you are compressing data, or encrypting data, I should say. They're not going to move fast. So unless you absolutely need to have that file you know i would probably try to avoid accessing too many large files small files you know more documents spreadsheets things like that are not a problem you can even open them from here so you can see that i've opened up a spreadsheet that's actually located on my system and i've opened it through my remote laptop so that's about all there is to it so it's pretty straightforward once you understand that you have to actually access things through an ip address so the next thing I want to talk about is direct browser access. There are times when you want to access things um, via the browser, for example, your router interface, maybe a webcam or something that you need to access, or even your NAS interface to make configuration changes. Um, you can do that directly just by simply doing the same thing. You need to actually access things through the IP address. So if I go into my 
So if I want to access my NAS, I can just type in the IP address, much like I would be doing from home, and it will actually take me in to the IP address. Now I'm on an extremely slow cellular connection to demonstrate the um, the VPN right now, so it's going to take a little bit to, to uh, actually come up, but you can kind of get the idea. Anything I do on the browser, as long as I'm doing it through an IP address, I can access that net. I can access that network device. And then the other thing I want to mention is remote desktop. And this is probably one I use the most because it allows me to control an internal system, do things much quicker, because all I'm actually having to do is to RDP into the system. Now, just to clarify, I'm not running remote desktop over the internet. I'm running remote desktop over the VPN connection. So don't confuse the two. Running uh, remote desktop, you know, totally over the internet is highly insecure and just just a problem in general, but tunneling it through a VPN is pretty safe. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so now that I'm connected remote desktop, I can do the same things. I can go into my browser or I can go into my file explorer or I can access network devices. Um, I can launch the browser and do things directly. And as you noticed, it's much snappier because what I'm actually doing is actually running um, a local system inside my network and only re using the uh, remote desktop protocol to actually send the commands, which is far more efficient than actually transferring all that data. And so let's see what happens if we try to log into another system, uh, use an RDP that and take control of my, say, um, my Blue Iris security system. So if I go ahead and put pull that up. So I'm logged into that particular system and I can go ahead and launch Blue Iris just same way it was if I was actually sitting in my own desk with the only slightly noticeable difference that it's going to be a tad bit slower. But for the most part, again, all we're transmitting is the data needed to run um, remote desktop. You're not transmitting all of the graphics data and streaming data across your VPN connection. So if you want to use QFile to access your files through the VPN, then you need to make sure that QFile is configured as a local device. This is because when you're logged into OpenVPN, it's the same as being on a local network. So just to go through the basic setup, once you launch the QFile app, then select Add a new NAS. Once it opens, all you have to fill out is the IP address, the NAS username, that you set up in your users and the password for that user. You can use the admin account, but I recommend using just a regular user account. It's always good practice not to use the admin account for security reasons. Keep in mind that this user and password only pertains to the file access of your NAS. Once you finish, select login and you should be good to go and have access to all the files that that user has. So the last thing I want to talk about is actual security. Now, there's a lot of discussions on VPNs, and we, in my first video, we talked about the difference between a cloud-based VPN and a client and a server home server-based VPN. So one of the things I want to draw your attention to is that when you're at a public location, you want to route your traffic through home, and the reason you want to do that is that point-to-point -point is encrypted. So once you get to your home internet. It's like, again, surfing from home. It's not going to do any kind of, uh, you know, geographic relocations or any of that kind of stuff. It's just basically a point to point. So not only do you gain access to everything that's in your files, directories, and devices, um, you're also routing your traffic through your home system, making it much more secure when you're doing from a public location. So your mobile device basically should be connected to VPN the minute you want to do anything. So in summary, think of your VPN connection as a really long Ethernet cable. It's just like being right in front of your desktop with access to all the same devices. Other than the need to know some IP address, most things should work as if you were just at home. Add to this the fact that you're encrypting point-to-point -point connections when you're using public Wi-Fi and you have a really good combination. Maybe in the future QNAP will fix their cloud service, making it easier and more secure to use. But even then, you'll only gain access to the files on your NAS and not the rest of your systems or devices. So setting up something like OpenVPN still makes a lot of sense. 
I'll be doing a separate video on the Qbelt VPN in the future, just so you have another option. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to post your comments and questions below. And if you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll find out about new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.